Hey guys, what's up? Andrew here, obviously. And I'm going to keep saying Andrew here, even though my new channel name is Atrocious Exhibition. I'm just going to keep saying Andrew. And I'm back with a new vinyl collection video, part 5. Uh, we have 8 records to talk about, so no bullshit. Let's just get this out of the way, so this video isn't super long. Okay, first record. So this is a prog album, 70s prog album from uh, Denmark, I believe. The first song is like the biggest hit off the album and the rest of the album not many people talk about, but this is Focus with their album, either Focus 2 or Moving Waves, depending on where you live. I have Moving Waves. Focus is a, a Dutch uh, symphonic prog band from the 70s and they're most known for the first song off this album, which is Hocus Pocus. A uh, big radio hit. It was in um, Baby Driver. If you've seen that movie during the chase scene. It's in a label. It was in that movie. It's always played on the radio. The cover. It's a great song. Uh, very fast, fun, hard rock song. Uh, very fun to play on bass, actually. I learned that on bass, and it's very fun to play. Uh, here's the original sleeve, inner sleeve, which I don't use anymore, but kept it anyways. So the first song on this album is great. Uh, the rest of the stuff is just kind of typical symphonic prog. Um, interestingly enough, you technically have two title tracks on this album because you have Moving Waves and Focus 2. So depending on what version of the album you have, there's a title track. And then along with that, uh, the second side of the album is taken up by an entire prog suite, just like all the great prog bands used to do. These guys did it. And that song is called Eruption. Pretty solid stuff. I don't spend this a lot because um, there's better symphonic prog in my opinion but from time to time it's a fun listen but if you're gonna check out this group i definitely recommend listening to hocus pocus first and seeing if you recognize it because it's such a such a fun fun song so yeah moving waves by focus cool stuff Sticking on the same trend of symphonic prog from the 70s, we're going to talk about another symphonic prog band from the 70s. However, this is not their progious stuff. I'm, of course, talking about Genesis. And the album I have here, the first Genesis album I have, is A Trick of the Tail, which is the first Genesis album with Phil Collins on vocals. Now, when it comes to Genesis, a lot of people know the Phil Collins stuff because that's the most popular back and then obviously it is a gatefold with the lyrics and some drawings most people know the phil collins stuff for the 80s sound and their kind of art pop power pop sound most genesis fans who have listened to every genesis album will probably tell you that phil collins stuff is terrible i've listened to every genesis album and i can tell you that i actually really really like the phil collins stuff it's not my favorite Genesis stuff, but I do really enjoy it. This is probably my favorite Phil Collins era Genesis album. Your sleeve. This is probably my favorite Phil Collins era Genesis album. And like I said, I don't I don't join in on the hate on Phil. I really don't. I quite like the material, and when it comes to Peter Gabriel or Genesis, I personally really love Trespass, Nurse Your Crime, which is my personal favorite Genesis album, and Foxtrot. Selling Down by the Pound and Land Lies Down on Broadway, where I kind of get lost, I do think they kind of bit too much. I can't think of the, I can't think of the phrase off the top of my head, but they, they were reaching for a little too much, in my opinion, and it loses me at times. But those first three prog 
Genesis albums with Peter Gabriel on vocals are so, so good. But this album is really, really good because Joe Collins was a great replacement for Peter Gabriel because they have very similar vocal style. Dance the Volcano opens up, Entangled, Squonk, Squawk, Squonk. I think that's how you pronounce it. Probably my favorite song off the album. Madman Moon, Robbery, Salt, and Battery, which is kind of like a Phil Collins era take on um, Harold the Barrel from Nursery Crown. Kind of just this fun, uplifting, not uplifting, but upbeat rock song. Ripples, Trick of the Tail, the title track, and Los Endos. So, this is my personal favorite Phil Collins era Genesis album. I think it's great. So, if you've only listened to the 80s Genesis stuff and you want to see what they did in the 70s with Phil Collins or you've only listened to the Peter Gabriel stuff and you want to get into uh, Phil Collins era Genesis check this album out it's one of my favorites sticking on the same trend of Phil Collins era, er, Phil Collins era Genesis Duke Duke was released after Trick of the Tail they released Trick of the Tail and then they released two more albums after that, uh, Wind and Wuthering, and, and then the number three. I think that's the order. I might have got them mixed up. They were they were doing a proggy sound, but it was almost like like a poppy, very accessible prog sound. This is much more of a leap into the art pop sound, and they sound much more comfortable in this sound. This is also a gatefold. Same kind of thing that was going on, Trick at the Tail, lyrics with pictures. Um, cover back so this sounds really cool this is probably my second favorite Phil Collins era Genesis album center label has the character on the front of the cover doing some kind of whatever inner sleeve nothing crazy so yeah this album is really really fun uh, starts off with Behind the Lines, the Duchess, Guide Vocal, Man of Man of Our Times, Misunderstanding, which is a really, really good song. Heath Hayes? Heath Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Turn It On Again is the big single. Alone Tonight, Cold Sack, Please Don't Ask, and then it ends with the Duke Suite, which is Duke Travels and Duke's End. So it does have a little bit of prog in it, even though it's more of a pop album, but... So they are giving some of their 70s fans something. But yeah, I really, really enjoy this album. Like I said, it's probably like my second favorite of the Phil Collins era of Genesis. I really, really dig it. Once again, if you want to get into Phil Collins era of Genesis, I'd, I'd recommend this album as well, along with Trick of the Tail. So yeah, Duke, great album. People need to stop hating on Phil Collins just because he made him pop. Trust me. In terms of pro 70s prog bands in the 80s, they did a lot better than some of the other bands. Let me tell you what. Some of those 70s prog bands flopped in the 80s. Genesis did, Genesis did uh, pretty good for themselves. So yeah, Duke, great album. Check it out. Alright, so next up is an EP... And it's from a band that a lot of modern rock bands either love or hate. And I can say for a fact that after hearing what they did on their next releases, I am not on board with that. But I'm okay with owning this EP, even though I pretty much never spin it anymore. Greta Van Fleet, Black Smoke Rising, their first EP. These guys kind of blew up in the recent years because they sound, and I'm not being, I'm not trying to exaggerate here, identical to Led Zeppelin. There are other bands that sound like Led Zeppelin that kind of, you know, they do the, the Robert Plant bluesy kind of sexual vocals and Jimmy Page's guitar licks and they've tried replicating it and it, you know, you can hear traces of it in other bands, but this is like, wow, this sounds exactly like Led Zeppelin, which you would think would be a good thing. Gatefold, 
However, it's it gets to a point where it's like, do I want to listen to this or do I just want to listen to Led Zeppelin? And it you kind of ask yourself that a lot when playing this album. So it starts off with Highway Tune, which is pretty much a very similar immigrant song-esque track. Safari Song is good. Flower Powers, you know, kind of like their Zeppelin-esque, like, acoustic song, like going to California or uh, Black Mountain Side or... Um, What's another song off Led Zeppelin 4? It's probably my favorite song. Battle of Evermore. Battle of Evermore. It's probably my favorite song off Led Zeppelin 4, to be honest with you. And then the title track. It's really not bad, but... It's... It gets really hard to listen to at times, because it's like, wow, this sounds just like Led Zeppelin. Like, it's like, what... I, at this point, let me just listen to Led Zeppelin, you know? And I got into these guys as I was kind of falling out with Led Zeppelin. So that didn't help things at all. So yeah, if you're into Led Zeppelin and you don't mind hearing a band that sounds shockingly similar to them, I recommend this EP. I can't really speak positively about everything else they released after this EP, but I can say for a fact that this is okay. It's okay. So yeah, Gary Van Fleet, Zeltel debut, if you're in Zeppelin, check it out. If you're not, don't. Okay, so this next one's gonna give me some shit. Not only because of my opinions on the album, but because of where I got it, and you'll see why. When you ask people what are the greatest jazz albums of all time, they'll say two albums. Or what album should I start if I want to get into jazz? They'll say two albums. Kind of Blue by Miles Davis and A Love Supreme by John Coltrane. John Coltrane is a was a saxophone player, jazz saxophone player, and one of the most famous names in jazz. This is often regarded as his magnum opus. This was his big, huge leap into avant-garde jazz, spiritual jazz, and that kind of thing. Moving on from the sounds of Giant Steps and My Favorite Things and Bags and Train and stuff like that, which are my personal favorite albums from Coltrane, he went to this, which is what a lot of people will say is one of the greatest albums ever to go on Rate Your Music. It's listed in the top 30 of all time. People just adore this album. I kind of disagree. First time I heard this, I would, I, my mind was blown. I thought this was absolutely spectacular. On subsequent listens, though, it's not sitting with me as well. Which is actually the kind of the opposite that relationship I had with um, Kind of Blue. Here's just the gatefold. Beautiful drawing. Of Mr. Coltrane there. It's the opposite relationship that I had with Kind of Blue, where I heard Kind of Blue and I was kind of like, eh, that was all right. But then I heard it more and more, and then I was like, oh wow, this is amazing. With this one, it's like I started off loving it, and then I kind of, I don't want to say salad on it because I still think it's a good album, but man, I definitely. Definitely don't care for this album as much as I used to. There's no track listing on the back, so I guess I'm going to have to read it off the record. That's professional. Side A, it starts with acknowledgement and then ends with resolution. And then the second side is just one song, Personance. So, three songs on a jazz album. You know they're going to be long, and they're... I don't want to say out there, but they're definitely more avant-garde than what Coltrane was doing at that time. Like I said, I'm not huge on this album, especially compared to all the other Coltrane albums that I've listened to. But I do love, like, avant-garde jazz. Like, that's, like, my favorite style of jazz. Like, avant-garde and jazz fusion, you know. Your later era, Miles Davis, your Ornette Coleman, your... Uh, Mingus, Shorter, 
and Andrew Hill and uh, Eric Dolphy and McCoy Tyner, who actually plays piano on this. There's so many great names in that scene, but I don't know. I just don't sit well with it. I got to give this another spin soon because as I get more and more into jazz, I feel more and more... Uh, I don't feel like I fit in if I don't worship this album like everyone else does. So if you want to get into jazz, don't even... Don't even try and start anywhere else other than Kinda Blue. That is Baby's first jazz album to a T. Like, that's like, that's like trying get, to get into metal without Sabbath. You know, it's like, why even try? So yeah, Kinda Blue, listen to that first, and then check this out. And if you like it, then there's a whole bunch of other jazz artists and albums to check out. Hopefully, I warm up on this album. Oh, and the other reason why people are going to be pissed at me, this pressing, I got it at Walmart because I live in pretty much a rural town. And when I saw it at Walmart, I was like, no one else, no one else in my town listens to Coltrane. So I just picked it up. And yeah, the sound quality is not that good. That didn't help my listening experience, I can tell you that much. So yeah, Love Supreme. John Coltrane, it's a good album. Don't listen to me, I'm fucking dumb. Check this out. Okay, last three albums are from the same band, and they're actually metal. Wow, we have some metal in this video? Amazing. One of the most famous metal bands ever. You've all heard them, you've all listened to them. No introduction. Judas Priest. Hellbent for Leather. This is Hellbent for Leather, the Hellbent for Leather version. Uh, not Killing Machine, although I do intend on getting Killing Machine as well. Judas Priest, British heavy metal band. Like I said, they don't need any introduction. This is their same album, or they released this album the same year as Stained Class, which is my personal favorite Priest album. And this album is not the same style. Of Killing Machine. Here's the center label. Cover. Really, really cool stuff. Back. It's not the same style. I kind of lump in Sad Wings of Destiny, um, Sin After Sin, and Stained Class in like kind of like a trio of like kind of darker, more. I don't want to say prog. Because they're definitely not prog, but they're definitely more ambitious than some of the other Priest albums. So, like, the, the darker trilogy of Priest albums. And then the next three albums are, like, their biker metal albums. So this, then British Steel, and then Point of Entry, and then the next trio of albums I see as, like, the 80s speed metal kind of albums. So they're Screaming for Vengeance, Defenders of Faith, and then Turbo. I don't... I don't try and do that trilogy thing after that because it just completely breaks down because how can you put Ram It Down, Painkiller, and Jugulator in the same, it just, they don't mesh. But it works for early Priest. This, I don't listen to Priest much anymore because I pretty much listened to them so much in high school. So I kind of ruined them for myself. But this album is so much fun. Oh my god. Delivering Goods is an amazing opener. Rock Forever, Evening Star, Hellbent for Blood of the title track is the first album, or it's the first song from this album that I heard. Take on the World, Burning Up, The Green Metal Ishii, which is a cover, is an amazing, amazing track. Killing Machine, also a title track, depending on what version you have, similar to Focus. I didn't do that intentionally. Running Wild is one of the more famous songs off this album, Before the Dawn, and then Evil Fantasies. So yeah, this is definitely more poppy and more accessible than Stained Class, but don't take that as a negative because this album is so much fun. I just, every time I listen to it, I just think, man, this is, you don't have to take it seriously. You know, it's just a really, really fun metal album, and I don't, drive on motorcycles because I think motorcycles are really really unsafe but if that's your thing you know whatever 
I also even think you can listen to music on motorcycles. You have to turn the volume up to like 300, and that just seems stupid, but whatever. If I was a biker, I'd pretty much play this every single day. So yeah, I'll bend for leather. You've most likely heard it, but it's a great album. Next up, another Priest album. Their most famous album ever, Screaming for Vengeance. One of the most iconic metal album albums and album covers in history. Awesome, awesome stuff. This is a 82 press. I don't remember what press the Hellbent for Leather was, but it it looked older. It's definitely more, it's either a late 70s or early 80s press. So they both sound great, along with the next Priest album I have. So yeah, this is pretty much the most famous Priest album. Is that a label? Most famous Priest album, because it's got the biggest, bar none, biggest hit on it. On the back of the album, it says, From an unknown land, through distant skies, came a winged warrior. Nothing remained sacred. No one was safe from the Hellion as it uttered its battle cry, screaming for vengeance. It's just so cheesy in an 80s metal way that it's like you can't help but love it obviously this album starts off iconically with the hellion and electric eye pairing riding on the wind bloodstone take these chains pain and pleasure then you go to the second side and you got the title track which is really really fun you got another thing coming which i i could go the two three lifetimes without ever hearing again i've listened to that song so much Fever, and then Devil's Child, like I said. These, the Priest albums around this time were so much fun. You don't got to take them seriously. You just have some fun. Lyric, lyrics, and then picture the band at the time. You don't got to take it seriously. You just put it on. It's almost background music. I listen to this kind of stuff as background music because I've heard it so much. I don't have to, like, focus on it. So yeah, fun, fun stuff. I don't want to talk about it too long because everyone's, everyone and their mother has heard this album. You know, I'm not saying anything new. So, you know, Dream of Vengeance. One of the best Jewish Priest albums, like I said, Stained Class is my favorite. Sin After Sin is a close second. But this is definitely up there and it's probably my favorite Priest album from the 80s. So yeah. Awesome album. Last but not least, we have the final album of the video and the final Judas Priest album of my collection, and it's their most recent album, Firepower. When it comes to Priest after Screaming for Vengeance, Defenders of the Faith is great. Turbo is okay. Ram It Down is probably not the, it's probably my least favorite Priest album. Painkiller is awesome, of course. Jugulator's good, Demolition's meh, and then I, I don't, I find most of the stuff in the 2000s and, you know, up until this album to be pretty boring. This album is their best album since Painkiller. I have to put it over Jugulator. This is insane. I can't, it's mind-blowing to me that these guys were able to put up, put out such a good album at this late in the career. Really cool stuff. I just, I don't get it. It's absolutely mind-blowing to me that not only were they able to do it, but... The, oh, God. I hate pulling records out of double. Dude, I'm literally... There it goes. I'm going to pull this one out of the sleeve because it looks incredible. This kind of yellowish-orange vinyl with black marbling it just looks beautiful. Yeah, this album is really, really good. And that's saying something because I don't think, in my personal opinion, the last good album these guys had was Jugulator, and that was in the 90s. And now it's 2018, and, they find, and after a couple albums, they finally put out not only a good album, but, like, one of their best. Uh, on the back of it says, oh, I, excuse me if I mispronounce things, but... Forged by conflagration of molten metal theory in Hellion Metallion, a warrior for justice and salvation, ultimate god of firepower. Tight 
Tinnicus. Tinnicus. Okay. I'm just going to stop there before I say something I probably shouldn't. Anyways, starts off with the title track, Firepower, Lightning Strike, Evil Never Dies, uh, Never the Heroes, Necromancer, Children of the Sun, Guardians, Rising from the Ruins, Flamethrower, and Spectre, and the second, or they, they end the side A of the second uh, disc. Those are two of the best songs on the album. Trader's Gate, No Surrender, Lone Wolf, Sea of Red. My only complaint with this album, other than the production being a little too squeaky clean, which is what you can expect from uh, this producer, I, Andy, I think his name is. Andy something. Hold on, let me figure out what his name is. Andy Snape. Andy Snape, who's doing the new uh, Accept albums. The production's a little too clean for me, and on top of that, I, I do think a couple of the songs could have probably been trimmed off. This is album is a little too long, but other than that, it's solid. Solid, solid stuff. Um, one of my favorite albums from 2018, but I think most people... Most people agree with me on that. If they're into Priest, they pro I think most people really enjoyed this album. I think universally it was pretty acclaimed. Does Judas Priest really need to release a new album after this? I don't think so. Hell, they did what Maiden can't do, and that's release a good album past 2000, so... Good on Priest. Good on Priest for doing that. Firepower, check it out. And then I'll do it for this video. You know, next week I'll have another record video and we'll be back to the normal five records. I just want to showcase these all in one video because I didn't think that talking about five of these in one would have sufficed, but whatever. That's just bullshit. Anyways, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for the next final video.